Let's start to look at the play game method. Now there's a bunch of methods in here that haven't been written. And what I wanna do is just do the bet, handle that get bet method. And then we'll worry about uh, dealing with cards afterwards. Okay, notice when I build a player, I give them a fixed amount of money. That's gonna be their initial money. And the way I've coded this, I don't actually ever change the player's money directly. Uh, I tell the player, there's a method in a player called win bet, a method called lose bet, and a method called tie bet, and I'll talk about later, that will adjust, based on your bet, will adjust your total money uh, based on if you win, tied, or lost. So let's go down to get bet. You can do control B to go to the definition. All right, so we want to input their bet. All right, we have the player object here, which will be one. And I could put the name in here, p dot get name. So it'll say Chris or whatever you type in, enter bet. We have the scanner in somewhere and we're gonna go ahead and use that in dot. So let's try, oh, come on, next int. So this will get the next integer, but now I need int choice. All right, and then we'll just sout the choice. All right, let's go ahead, run this and see how it goes. Oh, we better comment that as well. Make sure your while statement needs to start and end. So make sure you have these brackets here. Uh, the reason I commented this is because you probably you may not have a display score method. Maybe you do, but it's fine. We don't need it at the moment. So let's go ahead and run this, see what, what we have. So I've already hard coded in Chris because I no longer did uh, read the next line and filled in the name. I just used uh, hard-coded Chris in for the name. So I don't have to spend time typing Chris in every time. Enter bet, 40, enter. All right, choice 40. Now you might be wondering why is this happening a second time? Well, let's look at our code. While not is done. So this is gonna keep running until the player has no money. And what is gonna run, well, it's gonna print a blank line and get bet. Print a blank line, get bet. Print a blank line, get bet. So it's just gonna keep running these lines over and over again. For testing purposes, that's actually pretty convenient. So what happens if I type 10? Oh, you see what happened there? Input mismatch exception. So the big drawback of doing next int is if there's not an integer, you're gonna get this uh, exception right here, it cannot, it's basically saying it can't convert what you typed to an integer. So let's go ahead and run it again. Enter bet. So if I have any letter in here, I'm going to have this problem. So I'll run it one more time. Now, if you do a number and then a letter, let's do 10A. What in the heck happened here? Well, it still can't turn 10A into a number. Let's do 10 space A. Then look what happened here. It actually accepted the 10, but when you do just do next int, it looks for whatever is in the input buffer until there's either a space, a new line, or a tab. It's a little weird, but there'll never be a new line because that is the key that sends what you typed to uh, system.in. Okay, so I don't want this to happen in the middle of playing the game. 
because if you accidentally type in a letter instead of just numbers, the entire game will shut down and you might be 10 or 20 minutes in and that can really annoy your player just because you made a uh, keyboard mistake, the entire game crashes. So I don't think most people are going to appreciate that. So what we're going to do is something that's a little bit tricky. So instead of getting next int, we're going to get next line. The power of next line is that it's going to grab everything I type. So it'll grab the 10 and the space and the A. Everything up until you hit the return. Uh, and if you do this on the name, I think I did this up on the name here, next line, your name could be two or three words or as many words as you want until you hit enter. So it allows longer names or names of spaces in them or tabs, but don't put a tab in your name. Okay, we got a problem though, because next line, come on, pop this up, string, there we go. String is what next line returns. So, we could run this and it should output the correct number to the screen. 40, choice 40, four, choice four. All right, we have to turn this number into an integer. And that's a little bit tricky. And so what I'm gonna do is use a try catch. So I'm gonna start this off. So I'll explain try catch in a minute. So we, the reason that we're not sure this is gonna work is because parse int doesn't necessarily, there's no guarantee that what I've typed in for choice could be parsed into an int. And what parsing means is basically just converting. So I'm gonna put in the catch. All right, so we're gonna try to convert it and we're gonna catch if it's not able to be converted to an integer. And what we'll print out is invalid input, be careful. And then we're gonna go p.setbet. Where's a set bet, there we go. You do need to write the set bet method. All right, but we have a problem. If I set the bet here, val no longer exists because val was created here. So what I'm gonna do is declare it above. There we go. Now there's still a problem. Let's see what this error says. Variable val may not have been initialized because there's no initial value. Uh, we need to give it one. There's still something that can go massively wrong here. All right, I still have that program running in the background. I completely forgot. Control, shift, delete stops it from running. Run it again. All right, Chris, enter bet 50, choice 50. Chris, enter bet 50A. All right, now invalid input, be careful. So it caught that. Um, now it's impossible to know if this went through or not. So what I'm gonna do in this print statement, I'll just put new round. So it'd be super obvious when there's a new round. Control shift delete to stop it. Run, okay. So I'll do 50A, invalid input, be careful. Now if you noticed, it went to a new round, which it probably shouldn't do because I need to get an actual bet. 
uh, they'll, they'll probably remove you from the table if you make a bet that doesn't make any sense and then don't do anything else about it. So what we're going to do is give our player a, more chances to make that bet. And the way we're going to do it, I want to repeat most of this. And actually, I still need to repeat. I don't like the LN there. All right. So I want to ask them to enter a bet, get their bet, try to convert it. But I want all of this to happen as many times as needed before I can successfully parse their choice. So zero, enter bet, a uh, zero to quit. Okay. So it's a, probably a bad idea to start val at zero because that if I look for that condition to quit, I would quit the first time. So I'm gonna use negative one as an initial value. So I need this to run lots of times. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna write a while loop. I'm not gonna write a for loop because I don't need a counter here. I don't really, I hope that the user doesn't take a million tries, but it's not my business how many tries it takes them to successfully enter a bet. Okay, while val less than zero. So as long as val is negative one, this is going to keep looping. So I need to stop the old one from running, control, shift, delete, and now run again. All right, so we're in a new round. Enter bet, 50, choice 50. And if you look, there's a new round. 50 was okay. I want to bet an apple. Choice apple, invalid input, be careful. All right, so I can do 10A and invalid input, be careful. Notice it's not starting a new round. It's continuing to ask me to enter a bet until I can finally enter a bet that's a number. All right, notice because val is less than zero, it keeps going. All right, let's bet that much. All right, ah, I've made a error check in my set bet. All right, what we've done so far is we've handled bad input by just repetitively asking them for their input. What I have not done in this code is checked to make sure that value is not, ab not above the player's money and also is not less than the minimum bet. So I'm going to write that here. Continue until minimum bet less than equal to val and I'll just do the double ampersands and val is less than or equal to all right how do we get the player's money players p dot get money all right if this method won't be written by default you're going to have to write that method but all you do is just return the the money Okay, so I'm not gonna put the code in here to check this, you're going to do that. And where should you do that? Why is it a bad idea to put it here? Think about, we do read in choice, however, choice is a string. You don't wanna compare a string to a number, that, that well, Java won't let you, but it doesn't make any sense. So you really can only compare inside here. So this is where your code's gonna go to make sure minimum bet's less than value and value is less than or equal to the amount of money the player has. And if, it's, if value is too small or too big, then just set val back to negative one and this will keep looping again and again. So again, if val is invalid, meaning it's not between these, then just set val back to negative one and this loop will continue to run 
until they enter a proper value. So that will handle the bet. Here is where the player actually gets the bet set. Oh, these rhymes are fun. So this sets the bet for the player. So you're going to have to write the set bet method inside the player. And if you just type this in, it'll say error and you can click on the error. And then one of the options should be to add uh, the set bet, set bet method to the player.